moment ago, we told you about a case at the Dominican Republic that has essentially stripped hundreds of thousands of descendants of Haitians living in the Dominican Republic of their citizenship. It's a ruling that cannot be appealed at the local level. But can it be appealed internationally? Joining us now for some perspective is Robert F. Kennedy Center for Justice and Human Rights staff attorney, Wade McMullen. Wade, welcome to the program. Hi there, thanks for having me. You were representing the woman who was at the center of this case, mother of four. She herself was stripped of her citizenship. Talk us through what ended up happening here. Yeah, that's right. So my organization represents Ms. De Keys Pierre at the international levels in partnership with a lot of Dominican organizations as well. She no longer had citizenship in the Dominican Republic and they ordered a lower court to um, review and nullify her birth certificate, essentially stripping of her, of her nationality. What happens to her now? Because from what I understand, she has 90 days that may, she may be able to get residency. What's the difference between a resident and a citizen? What this means now is unclear. Um, we have protective measures issued by an international human rights tribunal, the Inter-American Commission, on Ms. De Keys Pierre's behalf. And we're hoping that the government complies with those protective measures and doesn't take any actions that would result in her deportation. What's triggering this ruling? It just seems to international observers, just average citizens of other countries, that this is crazy. Why would this be? Could this be purely racism here? It's occurring in a context of generations of discrimination against those of Haitian descent in the Dominican Republic. Um, for the past decade, the government has tried repeatedly through legislation and interpretations and uh, executive action to um, embark on a denationalization campaign of people that it deems should not be Dominican citizens, but has citizenship by law. What international rules is the Dominican Republic breaking? It's generally accepted by all countries in the world that, that no government can take action to increase the number of stateless people. So if, if any government action takes place after this ruling, uh, implementing it that increases the number of stateless people, that's barred by international law. Secondly, the, the Constitutional Court ruling retroactively changes the criterion for citizenship, retroactively determining that some people who had rights now don't. That's also barred by international human rights law. And then finally, it's discriminatory. This decision, by and large, disproportionately affects those of Haitian descent. At the international level, if the Dominican Republic is found to be guilty, let's say in this instance, of violating those international agreements, what are the solutions here if they don't conform to the international rulings? Does the international community then pursue economic sanctions in this case? If the Dominican Republic takes steps to, that would result in hundreds of thousands, over 240,000 of its citizens to become stateless, we're gonna have a huge humanitarian crisis on our hands and I don't know who's gonna pay for that. So economic sanctions um, to prevent that type of situation, I would have to imagine should be on the radar of states foreign policy and their dealings with the country. What should international governments like Caribbean governments be doing about the situation? You know, I think governments uh, all around the hemisphere and especially in the Caribbean need to be um, telling their ambassadors to go to the president of the Dominican Republic and say this is unacceptable. We can't have a nation um, in our region um, threaten regional stability to the level that is threatened by this constitutional tribunal decision. Literally, if they go through and implement it to the letter of the law, over 200,000 people could be stripped of their citizenship. 200,000 people stateless in the Dominican Republic being threatened to send back to Haiti. Maybe they have no ties to Haiti even, you know, are going to be trying to immigrate to Caribbean countries all over the region. It's not just going to be confined um, to those living in the Dominican Republic. It's going to become a larger regional problem. Is it that Haiti cannot accommodate all these individuals if necessary, or is that that they would not want to go back to Haiti, period, because they don't know it and don't want to go? Yeah, so that's the thing. It's, it wouldn't be a matter of going back to anywhere. I'm thinking about people who have had families that were born in the Dominican Republic up to three generations ago, four generations even in some case, in 1930. So these are people whose parents and grandparents were, are, were Dominicans, were born in the Dominican Republic. They don't have family ties, linguistic ties, or any other kind of ties to Haiti or any other country. I think that you would see them trying to get access to countries all around the region. Wade, thank you so much for coming in. That's Wade McMullen. He's a staff attorney at the Robert F. Kennedy Center for Justice and Human Rights, joining us from Brussels. Thank you. 
she blazed the trail, ranking number four on worldwide trending topics on Twitter. Jamaica's Tessan Chin rocked the world with her rendition of Pink's Try on NBC's The Voice, wowing all four judges. So, who is this voice? How did she get on The Voice? And will she become The Voice? A profile of Jamaica's Tessan Chin next on 18 Degrees North. The preceding segment was brought to you by Caribbean Dreams.